There's a few um, um, stories that uh, have been written about you, some of your quotes that are in them. I want to make sure that these are true. We always play celebrity true or false here on The Rich Eisen All Show. Right. I'd like to do that here with Kevin Bacon here on The Rich Eisen Show. Please hit it, Mike Del Tufo. Celebrity true or false. You can't handle the truth. Oh, it's interesting we have you here since that's uh, from a scene that you were in at A Few Good oh, Men I right there. I thought that was just for my No, benefit. no, no. That's, oh, that's, actually, always... that's always part of our oh, drop, as they say okay, right there, cool. Kevin Bacon. That's great. All right. Uh, first one up here. It's true or false. Is it true that you tip DJs at weddings you attend to not play the song Footloose? I have done that. <laughs> I have done that. Yes. And I'll tell you why. I have a, Would you like to hear my reason uh, for that? Uh, Kevin Bacon, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I believe that a, a wedding is the one day in a non-celebrity's life when they can be the star of the show. Okay. The stars of the show are the bride and groom. The supporting cast <laughs> is the bridesmaids and the parents and, you know, the best man and, and the maid of honor and all that. I don't want to make a wedding about me. It's like mm -hmm. that's the one time when it should not be about, mm -hmm. about um, the famous person in the room. So when that song comes on, what happens is... I could be out on the dance floor enjoying myself. First off, the song doesn't come on, let's face it, until there's been a lot of alcohol. So, <laughs> so uh, people have been super, super cool and kind of like, oh, I'm not going to invade his space. But at the point 1045, when <laughs> the, this jockey decides to, everyone is half in the bag and it comes on and I, People will form a circle around me. And <laughs> like it's the horror. <laughs> yeah, it's like the horror, yeah. But I'm supposed to perform, you know, like, a, 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 you know, a trained monkey. And I, I, don't, I don't like so it. So what's the going rate to, to grease the DJ? What's well, it's been a few rate? years, but okay. it's, it's, probably, it's probably gone up. You know, I, I don't think a 20 would cut it. Anymore. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. All right, next one on that. Next one, uh, you based your character's hairstyle in Footloose on Sting. Because you're a big fan of the time of the police. Yes, that's true. That's true. Now, that being said, um, I, I, I said that that's what I was kind of going for. Uh, well, I mean, if you really look at m me through the years, and you, 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 my hair has always been pretty much related to Sting's. <laughs> I, was such a big, I was such a big fan of the police. And, but this haircut, yeah, um, uh, was given to me by a hairstylist for the screen test for Footloose. And the haircut cost $1,500. They told me this. This is 1982. So that was a lot of money. And the true story is, while I was sitting there going, holy I'm getting, sorry. <laughs> okay. Holy crap, I'm getting a, a, a $1,500 haircut. I look up and the guy's got his eyes closed. <laughs> Come on. He was cutting my hair. He was supposed to be a, he was a genius kind of guy. I think he had one name. Uh, and and uh, there he was, just like this. And, uh, you know, whatever. The rest is... Oh, my gosh. Man. If you will, movie history. Movie history. Uh, next one for you. True or false, Kevin Bacon? You worked for only four days on the set of JFK. Yeah, that was true. Yeah, it was, it was a quick That's one. That's it? Yeah, it was a quick one. Yeah. Four and out. Yeah, four and out. Uh, and, but it was it was it was uh, a pretty intense. It was an intense four days. I mean, I would say that they were spread out over probably over like three weeks or something like that. So it was it wasn't like I just went and shot them all together. But, right. But yeah. Okay. And um, what 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 days were what other scenes were being shot when you were there? What they were just your scenes? Uh, there were some times when uh, some other stuff was going on. I think uh, one of one of the things that I was rem reminded of. Uh, uh, the other day, uh, just coincidentally, I ran into Kevin Costner, who was in the in the in the movie, mm -hmm. um, and he was remembering that we shot a scene at the Louisiana State Penitentiary, which is a uh, out of another era. It's a massive, massive plantation uh, prison. I mean, I don't. It's like ten thousand acres or something like that. And bordering it is this giant swamp, and there's no there's no uh, wall, because no one has ever made it through this swamp, huh, right? Because it is so rife with uh, alligators and snakes and and mosquitoes and everything that it's like you know you you can't you can't cross it. Mm -hmm. And we were doing a scene. If you could picture, back behind me is the swamp, and I'm sitting on a box or something, 
and Kevin's sitting over here, and um, we're doing uh, my coverage, so the cameras are facing this way, and there's some guys in the background who are extras, mm -hmm. and I think they were actual uh, prisoners that they were that they were using, and they were supposed to be back working like in the swamp, I don't know, cutting uh, weeds or something like that. And I start doing my my scene, and Costner uh, is not. He keeps looking past me and he's like distracted. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm, you know, I'm trying to do my best here. And this guy's not even listening to me. You know, he's not, he's not, he's not watching me. I was really getting pissed. And they say cut. And turns out a guy was getting attacked by a snake. And, <laughs> and he had a, uh, a, a machete and was like going, chopping through the, uh, through the swamp, trying to get rid of this what? snake. And I ran into Costner the other day, and he said, listen, dude, I'm so sorry. I hope you know that. <laughs> years later. Year, like, that's a lot of years later. He had remembered it, and so had I, frankly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did you not know what was going on behind you? Or? Well, not during the take, I didn't. No, afterwards, I, they, oh. he, afterwards, I think he had said, listen, you know, uh, I, I, somebody was, there was something going on. There was a brouhaha. It's a turkey shoot with the yeah. snake, yeah, if yeah, you will. Yeah. Jeez. That's amazing. All right, last one for you here. You were cast in Animal House while still in acting school and flew at first class for the first time coming out to L.A. That's true. Fact. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was still in acting school. I was, I was uh, probably about 18, and uh, the casting director came to Circle in the Square while I was in, uh, in a acting school and said, uh, we need this kind of type, and they sent me over there, and I got the part, yeah. And you got it, and what was, what was Belushi like? Oh, man, he was... A Funny, generous, and uh, just a you know just a dynamic. He's the first star that I had ever met in my life. You know, so uh, he was already a big star on SNL. Right. SNL was was already such a an iconic thing to us in in uh, I guess in New York, but also beyond. And um, I'll never forget he he uh, had a he was doing he was doing Saturday Night Live at the time that we were shooting Animal House, so he would spend. I guess Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in, in Oregon where we were shooting and jump on a plane and get back for Thursday and then work until Saturday and Sunday, come back. So it was a crazy, crazy schedule. But at one point he found the time, uh, we were all in this you know crappy hotel on the side of the highway, but he had a house and he had a party for, for us. Uh, for the cast. Toga? And was there a toga? There was no toga okay. involved. <laughs> Not that part? Okay. Yeah, that would have been fun though. I but was mandated to ask. Yeah, no, okay. no, there was okay. no toga. But this blew my mind because there were two things. One, well, a few things. One is that I said, wow, this guy can afford to throw a party. That blew my mind. <laughs> Number two, he had bought um, smoked salmon, like from Zabar's or from Barney Greengrass or something, all the way out to Oregon from New York City, Nova. And I, first off, to me, smoked salmon, like Nova was so expensive that it, I, I wouldn't even eat it at that point in my life because I couldn't afford it. It was, and there were pi there just piles of it. I was like, "Oh my God, I got to put this in my pocket." And uh, and the third the third thing was that um, it was the first time I'd ever tasted or heard of a mimosa, and the idea <laughs> that you would take orange juice and mix it with champagne, <laughs> with like the most expensive thing that you could possibly order, and you're just gonna put it in champagne, and would put it in orange juice, and then just drink it in the morning. I I was like. This is so cool. I really want to be a superstar and have mimosas and throw a party and have smoked salmon, as yeah. much smoked salmon as, as anybody could eat. Locks for everybody. That's right. Mission accomplished. You know what? I never thought, Kevin Bacon, when I'd ask you that story, I would hear about partying with flounder, having salmon. <laughs> oh, there you go. Hey, now, everybody. I'm done. For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download The Rich Eisen Show app.